Hi everyone, this is GKCS. Uh, we are talking about a prompt from Coding Game. So uh, it's based on Mindy Search. And you have Batman with you this time. Uh, and there's Joker who's placed a bomb somewhere on this grid. But you have an indicator, okay, as Batman. The thing is, this indicator, so initially you are put randomly on any part of this grid. But this indicator will tell you uh, in which direction the bomb is. So that can either be left, right, up, down, or diagonal. So that will be up, right, up, left, down, right, or down, left. Right, and you'll see why these positions are pretty nice to have, you know, uh, when you have some straight uh, bomb indication given to you. So, yeah, and Batman is placed randomly on the grid, so I have just placed him at 0, 0, so that's a simple case. Right, and the bomb is placed on, what is it, 9, 1, or 1, 9, if you have rows first. So, here's the thing. This is a, a problem where you have to find something based on the outputs that you're getting. Okay, so it's like making queries and getting answers for that. The moment you stand on top of the bomb, by the way, Batman will diffuse it, so that's nice. The only constraint to the problem is that you can make at most J jumps. Okay, so given a scenario, you can make at most J jumps over there. So typically, if the board is 10 cross 10, that's 100 cells, then J will be around 10, less than equal to 10. Okay, and so on and so forth. And we'll see why this works out. The first thing to observe is that whenever Batman makes a jump, uh, he's eliminating some area. So if Batman jumps right here, and you get the indication that the bomb is to the up and to the right, then what you do is every cell to the left or to the bottom is useless now. You know that those cells can never have the bomb because the bomb is to the up and to the right and it's not changing position. So that's the thing. If you're here, you know the bomb is somewhere over here, meaning that everything below and to the left is useless. These cells are taken out. So what's, that's an observation. What's our strategy? What do we want to do? We want to maximize the amount of area that we can get rid of every time. And in computer science, you always think about the worst case scenario. So you want to maximize the amount of area you are removing in the worst case. Now, if you had thought of the best case, then you know, what if the bomb is right here and we jumped on the bomb and we diffused it in one shot? But that's not how you should think. You should think about the worst case. And that tells you that if you jump here, what if the bomb is somewhere over here or over here? Okay, you lost a lot of time making the jump here. And basically taking all the cases into consideration, you want to maximize your output in the worst case also. So binary search does that. And if you uh, don't know about binary search, there's a link in the description. But this problem will be using concepts from binary search. What we are trying to do is trying to narrow down the place where our element exists, which is searching. And because there are uh, zero one outputs, which is which is these outputs, so that is either up or down or left or right. That's why it's called binary. Okay. This is 2D binary search. So it has eight possibilities. So what I've done now is taken left, right, top and bottom. So these are going to be telling us the row numbers and the column numbers for the area we need to search. Okay, left, right, top, bottom, that's all. Uh, initially, we have 0 to 12 as our column numbers. This is the region in which we need to search. And for rows, we have top to bottom being 0 to 9. Yeah, 0 to 9. So this is the area we need to search initially. What do we want to do? We want to maximize the worst case, that means we need to make a jump to the center of everything. So our row will be the central row of the remaining area. Okay, uh, now there is one small thing. You're at 0, 0, you got the indication of right down, which means you did not get the indication of right or down. You, know, you didn't get the indication of right or down. So that means that this row cannot have the bomb. Had this row had the bomb, you would have got an indication of right or left, whatever. Uh, and if this column had the bomb, then you would have got a direct indication of down, this one. Instead, you got down, right, 6. So left should increment itself to 1. That's because, well, these columns are only uh, the ones in consideration. And top should also increment itself to 1. Okay, this is the playing area you have now. 
and you want to go to the center of it. So what we are going to do is we are going to be taking the row as t plus b by 2 plus t. This is the equation we have. And that comes out to be 1 plus 9, which is 10, by 2, plus 1, which is 6. This is the row number. And column number similarly is L plus R by 2. In fact, there is no plus here. Yep. Doesn't make sense. You want to go in the center, right? So you just add them both up. And you get 5 here. Similarly, L plus R by 2 gives you, what's L, what's R? Yeah, 6. Integer division, not 5.5. So we get column number as 6 and row number as 5. So row number is 5, column number is 6. Here, yeah, my finger, yeah, yeah. This must be it. So Batman is making the jump. Batman has jumped all the way over here. And that is going to give us a new indication. The new indication is that the bomb is to the up and to the right. That's good to know because you're getting rid of this whole region now. And this is a big risk I'm taking because I won't be drawing this again. So I'm actually cancelling out the area so sure that I won't need to edit or you know, get back to this again. Perfect. So this is the region you have. In fact. In fact, just this much. Because Batman said, Batman got an indication that it's to the up and to the right. So it's not in this area also, or this area. Okay, now what? Well, you are standing on 5,6 and you have the indication that it's to the up and to the right. So which parameters should change in your region? Up and right means that you should change down and left. Okay, the opposite parameters need to be changed. So that's because your region uh, you know, has been effectively shrunk. So, down and left. Left goes, has to change and down has to change. So that is bottom. So bottom changes to what? It changes to wherever you are standing, which is uh, row number five. So that should be five minus one, because it's not five, it's not row number five, so it's four. All right, uh, the next thing is uh, well, left has to change, so 6. It should have been 6, but it's to the right, so that is 6 plus 1, which gives you 7. So this is your effective region now. 7, 12, 7 to 12, yeah, that makes sense. And 1, 4. Okay, in fact, 1 to 4. So that also makes sense, because we had gotten rid of this region on the first jump. Okay, so this is your effective region marked in the black area. What's next? Well, the same thing. T plus B now. So T plus B is 5. 5 by 2 gives you 2. Okay, that's the row number, which is this one. What else? Column number is L plus R. So that is uh, 7 plus 12, 19 by 2, which is... 9, I think, yeah, 9. So 9 is the row number, uh, the no, column number, actually. So this is where we are going. Yeah, this this seems like the guy. No, this one, yeah. We are right here. So Batman has made the jump from here to here. A logical, sensible jump. Yeah. So now what? Now we get a new indication. The bomb is to the up and to the right. Same thing. Up and to the right, but our current position has changed to 2 comma 9. Now what? Well, again to the up and right means that we need to update down and left. Down, which is this, bottom. What was it earlier? Oh, well, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Down and left needs to be removed and we can calculate that out now. So left is where you are, plus 1. That is 9 plus 1, which is 10. And down is 2 minus 1, which is 1. So this is the region. 10, 12. 10 to 12 is your region. 
and one one. That's nice. This is the this is the place. Okay, ten to twelve and one one. So this is the region you have remaining because you're going up and to the right. Now you see what's happened. It's become a linear array. So the, your next jump will show you something in the top four uh, outputs. So let's make that jump quickly. Left plus right gives you twenty two by two. So that is. 11 and this is 1. So right, it's just 1. Now it's nice. We are going to make the jump to 1, 11. 1, 11. So Batman makes the jump here. Now Batman gets the indication that the bomb is to the left. Okay, this one. So here you can do a simple binary search but you don't really need to because uh, all the parameters will fall in place and what are we left with? It's to the left, right? So the only, uh, only thing that needs to be changed is right. So finally, right changes from 12 to, it's to the left. So you, you're, where are we? This is 11 and this is one. So it's to the left, meaning right has to change, meaning plus one has to be added here. Rather, left. No, minus one has to be added. So, this is 11. Yeah, I, I just had a cheating glance over there, but it is 11. It has to be a minus one. And the code actually will make the implementation much simpler. But we are trying to understand the logic behind the jumps. So L, T, and B remain the same while R becomes 11. So the row number T plus B is still the same. It's 1. And C becomes the column number becomes equal to 10. Because that's 21 by 2. So that is 10. Okay, we are making the jump to 10, which is this column. So, yeah, 1, comma 10 gives you this, and now Batman reaches the bomb and diffuses it. Okay, so how many turns did you take? 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 turns to diffuse the bomb. On a 10 cross 10, no, on a 13 cross 10 board, that is 130 cents, and you just took 4 turns to solve this problem. So what we are seeing is that even in the worst case, you're getting rid of at least half the area. Okay, that's a property of binary search. And so this is going to be taking you log to the base to n into n jumps. Okay, where n and n are the dimensions of this grid. So that's it for Batman. There's a link for the code in the description. Uh, and if you have any doubts or queries, then you can leave them in the comments, of course. Uh, one of the things I want to address is that I've been thinking about dynamic programming for a long time now. And there have been problems which I've shortlisted and I'm going to be solving them uh, in the next videos. So, Ankush Vimani, thanks for reminding that. Uh, I think the next thing I'll pick up is Bitmask with dynamic programming. And then probably Digit DP, as they call it. So, those problems are coming up next. And I'll ensure that there are... You know, if there are any videos, then they'll be very short ones, but the focus is on that now. Okay, so thanks and stay tuned. See you.